So imagine being able to control a computer or robotic arm with your mind alone. Now that seems like a stuff of science fiction, you know? But we're not actually too far off from that reality, it may seem. This is exactly what Brain Computer Interfaces, or BCI for short, aims to accomplish. BCI is a field of leveraging brain signals to control computers or devices, a concept that may sound relatively familiar to you if you've heard of Elon Musk's Neuralink. But before we deep dive into how BCI and how brain science is being used to change computing at large, subscribe to the channel so we can continue to feed you nuggets of gold to boost that brain and behavior. So to get started, as briefly mentioned earlier, a brain computer interface, or BCI for short, is a device that measures brain activity and translates it into external responses or instructions. BCI works by detecting the electrical signals produced by the brain, interpreting them, and then using them to control that external device. There are several ways to measure brain activity for use in a BCI. One method is to use electrodes attached to the scalp to measure the electrical signals produced by the brain. This is known as an electroencephalogram, or EEG for short. While it's been the principal way scientists have done things for decades, this may not be super effective considering that the skull can block and distort some of the electrical signals. So far, there are actually three types of BCI to be wary of. First is the non-invasive BCI. Non-invasive types utilize external sensors to detect brain activity. These include what I mentioned earlier, the EEG, as well as functional near-infrared spectroscopy, or SNIRS for short. These methods measure electrical or magnetic signals generated by the brain to infer the user's intentions or cognitive states. The second one is also called invasive BCIs. Invasive BCIs, on the other hand, require surgical implantation of electrodes directly into the brain tissue. Since these electrodes are directly implanted into your brain, they detect neural signals with high precision and can provide detailed information about the brain's activity. And the third is what's called hybrid BCIs. Hybrid BCI is a combination of both invasive and non-invasive approaches. It involves using non-invasive sensors to detect general brain activity patterns, but then invasive electrodes to obtain more precise control if needed. While moving things with the brain is definitely cool and it's stuff of science fiction, brain-computer interfaces have a much wider range of applications. And this is what makes the study so interesting. For one, it can improve brain function. It can be used to replace, restore, enhance, supplement, or improve natural brain functions interactions with the environment. It can also help with mobility. It can also be used to treat these neurological disorders that we have in our brain, helping people with ALS or spinal cord injuries, and ultimately be able to walk again. And it also helps to assist people paralyzed or locked in by neurological disorders to communicate and interact with the outside world. BCIs can also be used to control external devices such as robots, exoskeletons, or wheelchairs using brain signals. BCIs are not only powerful in these types of applications, such as disabilities and science, but there's a little bit more of a cooler aspect to it with gaming. We may eventually come to a point where it's actually part of our everyday entertainment. Additionally, BCI technology has the potential to revolutionize human-computer interaction by allowing people to interact with computers directly with their thoughts alone. Another way that brain science in itself is actively contributing to computing is through cognitive computing, a branch of AI that uses computerized models to simulate human thought processes. A cognitive computing system is designed to learn, reason, and make decisions independently as opposed to traditional computing which relies on explicit programming and rule-based systems. Cognitive computing is unmatched when it comes to understanding, interpreting, and responding to natural language. In just a few years, AI has made huge strides, as we can all see. Even generative AI platforms like ChatGPT, Midjourney, all of these, was ranked as one of the most widely used platforms of the year. The more that people use AI platforms, the more data we'll get, and the more data we get, the more advanced AI machining algorithms will become, and it'll ultimately enable cognitive systems to acquire knowledge, learn from said data, and improve performance over time. So as you guys can see from this description, there is a healthy synergy between the development of AI and brain science. As one improves, it creates room for the other to advance as well. They go hand in hand. As our understanding in brain science continues to advance via technologies like AI, it can provide greater valuable insights into the how the human brain processes information, recognizes patterns, and performs cognitive tasks. 
these insights can then inspire for the development of cognitive computing algorithms that mimic the underlying mechanisms of our cognition. Researchers can then devise algorithms that resemble how we learn, reason, and make decisions. This isn't something that will happen, but is something that is already happening. In fact, neural networks and deep learning models, which a lot of advanced AI algorithms currently controlling the platforms we use, are inspired by the structure and function of the human brain. Image recognition such as deep fakes and natural language processing such as ChatGPT are examples of this in action, actually. Ultimately, converging brain science with computing, while seemingly scary, is actually hugely forward in the advancement of technology, but also as ourselves. While there are definitely some ethical concerns to be discussed, it's definitely interesting to just know how much the science of our brain impacts the very algorithms that we are living by. So if this video was pretty interesting to you, and you want to know more about how technology is affecting our psychology, check out that playlist on the right where we have a bunch of other videos. And make sure to subscribe to this channel so we can continue to help you mine the golden mind.